Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. As we all know, the self-attention mechanism is at the core of transformer models. But as amazing as it is, it's fairly heavy in terms of compute requirements and memory requirements. Over the last year, a number of really amazing optimizations have been invented to solve those problems. And they've been implemented in state-of-the-art models available on Hugging Face. So in this video, we're going to start by a quick review of the self-attention mechanism, and then we'll look at two different ways this attention mechanism can be optimized. First, to reduce the memory bandwidth requirement with techniques like multi-query attention, group query attention, etc. And then by inventing, implementing faster, smarter attention layers. And of course, we'll discuss flash attention, flash attention v2, page attention, etc. Okay, so hopefully I will put everything in plain English. Uh, I've read all those papers. I've tried to uh, summarize them in the simplest possible way. And uh, well, hopefully this is your chance to understand all those concepts uh, in plain English. Okay, so let's get started. If you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget enabling notifications so that you won't miss anything in the future. Also, why not share the video on your social networks or with your colleagues? If you find it useful, others may find it useful too. Thank you very much. Before we dive into the attention layers, I want to take a few steps back. There are really many ways to accelerate models. So today we'll look at what I call new attention layers and faster attention layers. So I'll say technology improvements on the model side of things. But obviously there are other ways. Um, well, in quite a few videos, I certainly discussed hardware acceleration um, and using hardware features to accelerate models. Um, we won't go into that uh, today, but of course there will be more content later on this. And there's a, a, another side of the discussion, which is framework features, uh, model compilation, you know, PyTorch, 2.0, um, et cetera, et cetera, quantization and so on. And again, we won't go into that stuff today and that's coming later too. Um, but just to give you uh, the big picture on the different techniques that are available to accelerate models. So today we'll just focus on the attention layer. Okay, um, so let's start with what I call new attention layers, which are really evolutions of the uh, self-attention mechanism. And why don't we start by reviewing this? As mentioned before, the self-attention mechanism is at the core of transformer models. It's what makes them great. Uh, it's the, the major building block for those models. And I guess, as we all know by now, uh, this was uh, revealed to the world in a famous paper called Attention is All You Need, published in mid-2017. And I would encourage you to read it, uh, even if you're not a big fan of research papers, if you're scared of research papers, it's, it's actually not that ugly. Uh, so yes, there's a bit of math, um, but I think the, the authors do a really good job at explaining the, the attention mechanism and the I would say the, the key elements that make it powerful. So don't be afraid, you know, don't censor yourself. Even if you don't have a strong background in math and computer science, why don't you dive into it? Okay, you'll see, you can figure it out. And there are a ton of uh, really, really good detailed videos on YouTube on the attention mechanism and, you know, coding it from scratch, etc. cetera. And um, yeah, I would highly recommend that you go through that stuff as well. Anyway, today um, we want to understand what's a little bit wrong about this attention or self-attention mechanism. So from, a, a, um, I would say, a compute perspective, we are really multiplying large matrices um, that have uh, pretty large dimensions um, because there's the uh, sequence length involved, right? And that could be hundreds, if not thousands of tokens. And there's the... Uh, um, the embedding dimensions, again, that could be hundreds, even more, of dimensions. So that's really, you know, without focusing too much on that equation, um, 
the, the main problem here is we are multiplying very, very large matrices every time uh, we, um, um, we encode uh, an input sequence and every time we decode an input se sequence. So whether we're training or whether we're running inference, we are multiplying those matrices. And the problem here is really that we end up having um, quadratic complexity for compute and memory access. And quadratic is just a fancy word, a fancy complicated way to say that complexity grows to the square of the sequence length, right? So if you want to double the sequence length, then compute complexity and memory access complexity increases 4x, right? If you multiply the sequence length by 4, it increases 16x, etc. So the original transformers had a reasonably short uh, sequence length, right? BERT was you know, 512, etc. But now we're seeing large language models um, that have thousands, you know, 2K, 4K, 8K uh, sequence uh, length, you know, contents. Um, and so particularly for inference, this becomes a problem. Um, and, and as the contexts go, uh, grow bigger and bigger, and they certainly do with the popularity of uh, retrieval augmented generation, inference becomes very expensive. Okay, so that's really the, the base problem we want to solve. Uh, we want to reduce um, the amount of compute and the amount of memory accesses that are required to compute those self-attention scores. Okay? Um, and there are really two ways to do this. Uh, as mentioned, there is a way uh, focusing on reducing memory access, and we'll see why this is actually the bigger problem. And, uh, and this, uh, there's a way to reduce just, I would say, algorithmic complexity and reduce the number of operations involved. Okay, so we'll cover both. So let's start um, by actually looking at how, how self-attention is implemented in, uh, in our favorite models. Um, the paper describes self-attention, but models like BERT, for example, actually implement what is called multi-head attention. So what really happens here is uh, we split um, the attention calculation uh, across the dimension of embeddings, and we split it across a number of attention layers. So we don't, we don't have a single self-attention um, operation happening. We have multiple operations. And the, the reason of that is because each head will look at um, a, um, a fraction of the embedding space, and it can learn different relationships than the other layers okay so this is really uh, this is not an optimization at all okay uh, this is really um, or certainly not a compute or memory optimization this is just the way um, attention is implemented in the original transformers because we want each head to learn to focus on a fraction of the embedding space okay so if you have, um, let's say, uh, 1,000 or 1024 uh, embedding dimensions and you have, um, let's say, uh, eight heads, right? Then each head is going to look at 128 dimensions in the embedding space, okay? So again, not a compute optimization, just the way this is implemented. And of course, as we focus on what's wrong <laughs> with this, in a way, uh, we need to understand how it's implemented. Right. Um, so the standard implementation is really we have those matrices, um, uh, you know, the keys and the K, uh, the values, the V and the queries, the Q. And we load them from memory. We multiply them. Um, actually, each head will do its part of the calculation. And then um, we write the results back to memory. And you could say, well, yeah, what's wrong with that? Well, the, what's wrong with that is that GPUs don't have a lot of onboard memory, right? They have what is called HBM, which stands for high bandwidth memory, but that's off chip, okay? So it's not on the GPU itself. It's close to it, but, um, you know, in semiconductor world, close 
uh, or far are very relative concepts and uh, we'd rather speak about you know super fast fast or slow and that's the problem here so those large matrices which are the which come from uh, the model weights that have been processed are stored in HBM um, and HBM is not the fastest memory that the GPU can access right so that's really the problem when we load those huge um, matrices um, which have large dimensions because of sequence length and because of embedding size, embedding length, etc. We have to load them from memory that doesn't sit on the GPU. It is off chip. Okay. And well, they are really, really big matrices. And even though HBM is very fast, this still takes uh, quite a bit of time. So again, um, that's the, the main problem that quickly emerged when um, uh, transformer models started scaling and LLMs started scaling uh, sequence length and context length. The cost, the sheer cost of loading those matrices for every, every inference um, or every training step just became too much. And so the, obviously the training time and, uh, and more importantly, the inference time becomes, uh, becomes a problem. The number of tokens per second drops and your LLMs are just way too slow, right? So memory becomes a bottleneck and, uh, and that's the problem uh, that needs to be solved, okay? Um, if you want to look at the implementation for uh, multi-head attention, uh, I referenced the, uh, the file in the Transformers library uh, the code for BERT, and uh, and believe it or not, this is actually rather, dare I say, straightforward uh, to read. Um, if you you can really really see um, that that uh, algorithm implemented in the code, you can really see you know Q, K, Q, and V being multiplied, and you can you can see them uh, in action, right? So, if you're curious how this is actually implemented, I encourage you to go and check out the the BERT implementation. This is really how it works, right? Okay, so now that we understand how attention uh, is, uh, is uh, problematic in terms of memory more than anything else, let's look at the first optimization that was invented, okay? So uh, on the left-hand side here, uh, we see the uh, multi-head attention, the, the, one we, uh, the one we just discussed, okay? And on the right-hand side, we see um, the first step forward, which is called multi-query attention. And you can see it looks almost, almost the same, right? <laughs> so what's the difference? Uh, you, have to, you have to pay attention here. So the difference is, if you look at um, the, the orange box uh, in uh, multi-head attention, you see V-I-K-I, okay? And V-I and K-I, are the values and the keys that are used by each uh, head, right? So each head in the model has its own set of values and keys, okay? So basically just uh, its own matrices, right? And again, they are different. So each head needs to load them and, well, as we saw, this is quite a bit of, uh, of data we have to load. What MQA does is use the same set of values and keys across heads, okay? So let's say we have 32 heads. Well, instead of having 32, um, uh, you know, VI and KI matrices, we have just one V matrix and one K matrix, or I should say tensor, um, to share across all heads, right? And you can see immediately the benefit. The benefit is, well, if I have 32 heads, then I don't have to load 32 value tensors or 32 key, um, key tensors. I can just load one, right? Uh, what? One value and one key, right? So huge, huge optimization in terms of uh, the amount of data that needs to be loaded from, uh, from HBM, okay? Uh, this is implemented in Falcon 7 billion. And uh, again, feel free to go and check out the code. Uh, you can see and compare to BERT, which I found really interesting. Uh, um, you can see that, well, for Falcon, there is really only one uh, V tensor and only one K tensor 
shared across all heads, right? So um, less less memory here. Of course, um, as those values are also cached and reused during the attention uh, mechanism, and I won't go into the KD cache too much, that's another discussion. Um, well, we end up uh, storing much less data, right? So we're loading less data from HBM and we're also caching less intermediate results um, during, um, during decoding, okay? So bottom line, uh, we use less memory um, on, the, um, on the GPU as well. We increase um, the decoding speed uh, and MQA is reported to be up to 12x faster than um, MHA, so huge speed up, right? And as the cache uh, also is reduced, uh, it means we have more available memory on the GPU itself. And of course, we can put that memory to good use by increasing the batch size, right? And accelerate, well, I guess, training and also inference, right? So that's good news. What's the, what are the cons? Well, the con number one is um, there is a small accuracy drop as you would expect because we use uh, much uh, fewer parameters, right? Uh, so we have a single K, a single V for all heads uh, instead of having each head uh, with dedicated keys and values. So we have fewer parameters and well, if you have fewer parameters, then we can probably learn a little less so it's a compromise between accuracy and uh, and speed. It's not a huge drop. Uh, you can look at the numbers in the paper, but it is there. Um, another problem, I don't know if it's a problem, but it, you have to train the models with MQA. So you can't take a model that was trained with a, a multi-head attention and run inference with um, multi-query attention. So if you had a model that you like, you have to retrain it um, with MQA, right? With an MQA architecture. So that, that could be that could be painful. And another, well, again, I don't want to call it problem. It's, I guess it's more of a consequence is if you want to use um, techniques like tensor parallelism, and remember, we explored tensor parallelism um, in a previous video where I covered the uh, um, the hugging face and AWS stack for um, Trainium and Inferential. Um, so, if we have to use tensor parallelism to speed up um, to speed up uh, our uh, matrix operations, well, we kind of defeat the purpose here because um, K and V are unique. Right, and so there's really nothing to split across the GPUs, and and we have to replicate them. Right, uh, K and V need to be present on each node of the distributed cluster. So, um, not a great use of those resources as we end up actually uh, replicating the same K and V uh, across the cluster. Okay, but generally, um, you know, a, a really, really good step forward uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, reducing the cache size, optimizing memory usage, optimizing memory access, and generally accelerating things and, and inference in particular. Okay, so that's MQA. Now let's move on to the next one. Um, and so the next one is called Group Query Attention, uh, uh, GQA. And you can see on the top on the top graph here. Uh, well, that's multi-head on the left, obviously. So we have one keys and one values um, tensor per head. Um, then on the right hand side, we have multi-query, which is just discussed, where we have a single keys and a single values tensor per for for all the heads. And obviously, there's a middle ground, and that's what uh, GQA is. So GQA says, well, between one per head and one for all heads, maybe we can group them, right? So maybe we could say um, we have uh, one values and one keys tensor for two heads or four heads or eight heads, et cetera, et cetera. So it becomes a bit of a, a, another hyperparameter you, uh, you have to set, right? So interesting, uh, interesting technique. And, uh, and so the paper um, ran some experiments 
on uh, on T5 uh, XXL um, and and found that um, they could use GQA uh, to get um, almost the best of both worlds. They could get almost the same performance as multi-head and they could get almost as fast as multi-query, right? And so that's that's an interesting technique, obviously, and you can tweak, right? Uh, you can see on the, the bottom uh, right graph, obviously, if you set group size um, group size to one, then um, you're really doing uh, MQA, right? Uh, you have one keys and one values for um, all heads. If you set uh, to 64, in this case, uh, you have exactly the same results as a multi-head because you have one keys and one values tensor per head. And so there's the, the kind of the sweet spot in between uh, where, uh, you know, four and eight are um, almost as fast as... Um, uh, almost as fast as uh, group, uh, I'm sorry, as uh, multi-query, right? Um, but still with a, a very nice optimization in terms of uh, in terms of memory. Um, so that's the that's the trade-off, right? You try to find the number of groups that make sense that give you almost the exact same performance as multi-head and almost the same speed and I would say memory optimization as multi-query, right? All numbers uh, again in the paper. Um, this is implemented in Llama 2 and uh, and Mistral again. Um, another another interesting thing compared to uh, MQA is that models can be uptrained. Uh, so if you have an existing uh, multi-head attention model, you can train it a little bit further. Uh, it's not really fine tuning, but it's a little bit of additional training and um, and and migrate it, upgrade it. I don't know how how to say that uh, to uh, to GQA, right? So you don't have to run a full training again. And of course, if you want to use tensor parallelism this time, it's a better fit too, because as you have um, multiple value tensors, multiple key tensors, you can certainly split them across uh, across your GPUs. And just make a best, uh, make a better use of your hardware resources. Okay, uh, and again, yeah, feel free to take a look at uh, the the GQA implementation in Lama. All right, let's keep moving. So, how does sliding window attention work? In traditional vanilla attention, we see uh, we compute the attention scores for all token pairs. Um, at inference time, we actually mask um, the the future tokens, right? We don't want the uh, we don't want decoding to look at the future, uh, so we have this uh, uh, a triangle shaped uh, attention mask, right? As we as we see on the on the left hand uh, vanilla attention graph here, so that's still a quadratic uh, um, problem to solve. So. What uh, sliding window attention does is it will actually limit the uh, the self attention computation to a fixed window, which for Mistral is uh, four kilobytes, right? And so what that means is um, we can't see uh, more than um, window size. So in this case, we can't see more than four k tokens from the previous layer, okay? So an immediate consequence is if you work with very short uh, sequences, uh, this makes no difference at all, right? If, you, if, if your sequence length is shorter than the window, it makes no difference. But as you start scaling the sequence length, uh, the input sequence length, then the, will, the window starts applying, right? So the, the maximum context size that you could use is the window size multiplied by the number of layers, which for Mistral gives us 131K, right? So still a lot, okay? So that helps reduce the attention complexity from quadratic to linear, and again, speed up inference. So this is a slightly different technique compared to the previous ones here. We're not trying to mess with, you know, how many queries and how many keys tensors we have we're just shortening 
the attention span, literally, and propagating it across layers so that in the end, uh, the model as a whole will have seen the full sequence length, right? But each layer will only have seen uh, a window uh, on that sequence length, right? That's the, that's the story here. Okay, and uh, of course you can go and take a look at the implementation. This one is a, is a little more complicated, um, but you can still uh, you can still figure it out. Okay, so that's the first um, that's the first problem we want to solve with attention, right? Reduce the amount of data that needs to be loaded, um, and and we can achieve this by again uh, tweaking the number of keys and the number of queries or the actual attention span. Um, and there's another group of techniques which are um, much more about rewriting the, um, um, the attention algorithm to just make it faster. And that's what we're going to cover now. Okay, And I call this one uh, faster attention layers because these are really all about um, algorithmic um, um, improvements. So the first one I want to discuss is flash attention. Um, so what's the point of flash attention? So remember we said um, the main problem is high bandwidth memory um, is still too slow. <laughs> and of course, quote unquote slow um, compared to uh, on GPU memory. So is there a way we can run that self-attention computation on the GPU itself uh, without, or I would say with minimal back and forth to high bandwidth memory. And this is exactly what flash attention does. So flash attention will do the exact same calculation. Okay, so it, it applies the standard uh, attention uh, computation, the matrix multiplication, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But instead of loading um, the, the matrices, the Qs and the Ks, etc., and writing them back all the time, it will load them once, okay, and apply and apply uh, a, a fancy technical tiling, which I'm not going to go into. You can go and read the paper, but a, a clever a clever algorithm to compute um, the full matrix operations uh, incrementally, right? So that even if we have limited on GPU memory and you know uh, static RAM in, in that case, we can go through the full multiplication without having to load you know chunks from uh, HBM, run the computation right back to HBM. We load them once, then we use the clever tiling algo to iterate over the computation in um, in static RAM, which is on the GPU and which is much faster. And then once we have the final result, we write it back to HBM, okay? So that's the first part, uh, limiting uh, the HBM memory accesses to minimum. And then uh, the second part is just parallelize everything over batch size and number of heads, okay? So we leverage, of course, the, the GPU cores to compute all those uh, things in parallel. And that gives us another uh, very significant speed up. So very, very clever algo. Um, not the easiest thing to understand, to be honest, uh, but go and give it a go if you're interested. So how is that better? Well, here's, here's a quick example. So let's say N is the sequence length, D is the embedding length, and M is the size of the SRAM cache, so to speak, that you can allocate to flash attention. So flash attention requires uh, big O, N2, D2, divided by M, HBM uh, memory accesses, okay? So the complexity uh, is um, um, uh, proportional to um, the square of sequence length and the square of embedding length divided by the size of RAM, SRAM. So you can say, well, this is still quadratic, right? Uh, with respect to sequence length. So how is that better? Well, that's the trick. If we say um, our uh, SRAM cache is equal to sequence length, right? 
um, then obviously we cancel one of the ends and now we only require uh, something along the lines of um, n um, memory accesses right so now our our memory complexity is linear with respect to sequence length again because we are dedicating some of the uh, some of the on the gpu uh, memory uh, to cache uh, the operations and to implement that uh, incremental algorithm called tiling okay so that's the trick uh, so yes memory complexity is now linear um, it's two to four x faster in terms of inference and it saves 10 to 20 x uh, memory as well right which means again we can probably increment uh, we can probably increment batch size as we're freeing memory What's interesting with flash attention, it, it, it does optimize both the forward and the backward uh, passes. So uh, this will also accelerate training. Okay. And uh, well, yes, flash attention has been available in uh, our uh, text generation um, inference server for a while now. Okay. So that's flash attention, a combination of using on chip memory to uh, avoid slower HBM accesses and very cle clever uh, parallelization. So flash attention too is just, as you would imagine, another, uh, another round uh, of optimizing flash attention. Um, this one is trying to do different things. First, it's trying to reduce uh, and, and pretty much eliminate um, any operation that is not a matrix multiplication right uh, so any scalar or, or or vector operations are are minimized because of course um, gpus can best accelerate those uh, um, tensor operations so the algo was rewritten you could say uh, to reduce the number of operations that couldn't be fully parallelized and accelerated by the gpu um, the second thing is, of course, um, MQA and GQA uh, became kind of a thing. And, uh, and flash attention is also optimizing for that. Because if you remember from 15 minutes ago, MQA and GQA reduce um, the amount of keys and uh, uh, queries, tensors, that need to be processed. And again, there are some particular optimizations you can do on that instead of multiplying those head um, keys and and values right so uh, very cool stuff where you know it's uh it's it's a very positive flywheel where uh, attention layers become less memory hungry and so well um we can we can optimize and accelerate um uh, flash attention for that so pretty nice uh, even more parallelism uh, this time across the the sequence length so uh I, would, I guess you could call it sequence parallelism, um, which I think we also discussed in that uh, previous video on tensor parallelism and so on. And the, the result is flash attention 2 is 2x faster than the previous version uh, and up to 9x faster than standard attention. And you can see that uh, on the graphs, right? So you can see on the left, it's the forward speed. So pretty much I would say inference. Uh, you can see the, the teraflops per second. Blue is vanilla PyTorch with vanilla intention. Yellow or orange <laughs> is uh, flash attention V1. And uh, the purple uh, bars are flash attention 2. Right, So you can see um, flash attention was already quite fast. Flash attention 2 is even better. Right, And on the right-hand graph, you see forward and backward. So that would be training. And you can see here as well, um, there are significant speedups um, across the board, right? And flash attention too is also available in TGI. So you can just, uh, it's literally uh, one parameter away. Okay, we just have one more to go. Um, grab a coffee uh, if, you're, if you're feeling tired. Uh, this one is called page detention. So page detention is, uh, is still fairly recent. And this one takes um, a pretty different approach, right? Uh, so MQA, GQA was about, okay, let's just use, uh, I would say, smaller, a smaller amount of tensors 
inside the tension layers. Flash attention is just being very, very clever about um, computing and, and reducing HBM accesses again, etc. cetera. A page attention solves yet another problem. So uh, the KV cache, which we mentioned before, which is really uh, a cache of intermediate um, keys and values uh, calculation, in fact, uh, dot products, right, that are uh, that are computed during uh, self-attention mechanism. Um, this cache um, is very useful because it saves us from computing those dot products again and again and again, and, well, that's nice, but um, it grows and shrinks, right? Every time we have a new inference request, we need to allocate cache according to sequence length, uh, and then, of course, we need to free that memory, et cetera, et cetera. And this is really not an AI problem at all. It's, it's an old school operating system problem, which makes me very happy. Um, I guess this problem started to, to happen in the 70s, right? Uh, maybe earlier where, you know, you allocate and allocate memory dynamically in your system. And because you allocate and deallocate uh, variable block size, well, you end up fragmenting your data, right? And all of you follow the an operating system class will know exactly what I mean. And that's the problem we have here. Um, we end up having fragmented memory. So we have lots of tiny chunks of free memory. Um, and so if you add all of them up, then yes, there is plenty of memory, but few of them are actually large enough uh, for your uh, memory allocation requests, right? So your memory is just like, you know, Swiss cheese in a way. And so um, the page detention uh, mechanism, and now you understand why it's called page detention, uh, is solving in exactly the same way as virtual memory systems back in, um, back in the 70s and in the early versions of uh, Unix, yes. Um, by just uh, chunking um, the memory into fixed size blocks and they're called pages, right? And so that means there is no free space between those pages and now we can allocate and deallocate on, uh, on memory aligned boundaries, right? And page aligned boundaries, um, just like virtual memory pages in operating systems, okay? And so by doing this, uh, well, we reduce um, external memory fragmentation. There is none, pretty much, because, because uh, all memory bytes belong to a page, right? So you don't have those uh, um, uh, empty intervals between pages. They're all contiguous. And you also reduce internal uh, fragmentation because you allocate inside the same page and you can obviously... Um, uh, allocate uh, more efficiently inside the page until it's full, and then you need another page, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's, again, um, the intuition and uh, probably the implementation is very, very close to what we used to do in operating systems. Uh, this is this was introduced in the VLLM project, um, and, um, and this page attention mechanism is also available in Hugging Face CGI. So very different take on... Uh, on, on accelerating and, and improving attention. But obviously, managing memory well on a GPU is critical because the more uh, free or the more available memory you can have there, the more you can increase batch size. And we know this is a really good way to, uh, to accelerate uh, GPU operations, right? So, so I... that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you. Um, one more thing, I guess. Uh, is in case you haven't seen it, uh, we have this amazing LLM performance leaderboard on the Hugging Face Hub. And not so long ago, they added a very cool looking and <laughs> useful uh, uh, graphs like this, uh, where you can see uh, the time to generate tokens uh, versus um, the, the model performance, the LLM score, et cetera, et cetera. And that's just that's just one of them. They they added a lot of good things, and of course this will help you figure out um, the memory requirements for the models, um, the the latency, the throughput. You know how many tokens per second, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And by the way, how well is that model doing on the uh, on the LLM benchmarks, right? In terms of 
generation quality. And and well, uh, if you uh, if you study this uh, for a little bit, well, you you should see the impact of all those techniques I've discussed, right? From again, optimizing modern architectures, uh, reducing the amount of query and uh, and key data. Uh, to um, uh, optimizing the actual computation algo uh, with flash attention to optimizing memory management with uh, page attention, right? So I guess we're getting dangerously close to having a, an LLM operating system at some point. I can, I can see this happening sometime soon, who knows? All right, well, that's it for me today. Again, if you enjoy the video, um, please give it a thumbs up subscribe, enable notifications, uh, share the video with your colleagues, and uh, I'll see you soon with more crazy content. Thank you and keep rocking.